Hello artists, how are you today? It's Stephanie Oni coming to you from the banks of the Trinity River here in Six Rivers National Forest near Willow Creek, California. Welcome to the studio. So glad that you are here with me today. Truly, I am very, very happy that you have found my channel. Yay! Welcome to all the new subscribers. And hey, um, if you haven't subscribed yet, please just, if you like the video, if you like what I'm doing, please hit that subscribe button and then the little bell, and that will tell you when all the videos get posted. I'm trying to post everything on Saturdays. That way you can binge watch if you want during the weekend, or you can watch it during the week and get your inspiration that way. Okay, on creating your first altered book part, this is part eight or part seven? I don't know. <laughs> You'll find out in the title. <laughs> we are working with fabric. Yes. Now, I'm not going to lie, guys. Fabric was a huge, huge challenge for me. And I don't really work with fabric very often because, you know, we've seen those same techniques done over and over and over and over. And I even went on Pinterest and looked for some new inspiration, and I really couldn't find what I was looking for. But then I went back to the theme of my book, which even though this is an altered book, it is actually becoming quite autobiographical. I am showing you my favorite places and my favorite things. And this is no exception. The ocean is one of my favorite places in the universe. And this little tag says, live for the moments that you cannot put into words. That was in addition when I did this page, which will be coming up in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So today is um, June 18th, I believe. I have five intros to do and I have four more days worth of projects to show you, two Patreons and two um, of my other series. <sighs> I'm trying to take a walkabout. I am. So let's talk about fabric real quick, guys. Um, look what you can make when you know the rules of color, Woo! which we just talked about last week or the week before. Week before this week, whatever this week was. <laughs> I'm getting confused with what I'm doing. Okay, so when you know the rules of color, you can really play with depth and with making your little intensity and all of those great things. The materials in here are super simple. We um, used Mod Podge, fabric, and a little copper foil duct tape. And I did use, I think, some diamond glue to keep the copper foil flowers down. And, you know, we're going to have a quick conversation about collaboration. And it's something that is so important. Um, oh, I also did use a little bit of white gel pen here to create the little highlights. Um, other than that, do not use Stabilo with fabric. Okay, we'll be right back and we'll have a chat about collaboration. And then you'll see the process. Super easy. Um, it is a little bit puttery, but it is pretty cool. All right, bye. Okay, let's talk about collaborating with another artist and why we would want to do it. So in this piece, okay, I'm going to just tell you, I had this much done and I knew I needed the pop of color to really create the depth. So until you have that good contrast, it kind of looks a little bit flat. I mean, not completely. It was super close to being there, but it wasn't quite there. And then I remembered a conversation that I had had with Kat Austin maybe about a month and a half ago, and she was talking about doing copper foil backed flowers. And I was like, whoa, what a thought. And at the time I was like, that is so cool. And then I forgot about it. And then I'm doing this process. And the everything that I was putting in the foreground was kind of falling into the background because these have a ton of dimension to them, these waves. And so I was having a really hard time building up on it, building up, building up. So I wrote her a quick text. I'm like, do you mind if I try that copper foil flower idea? And she wrote back and she's like, oh, I think that'd be so cool. It'd be so cool. And then she also said, you know, you might try to put some lavender flowers in there. And I was like, why lavender? So I went digging around. I found some you know, lavender flowers. 
and uh, you know, I just cut them out, guys. You don't need a template for the, the poppies, and I worked around through it, and I love the fact that this has dimension to it. These come off of the page, and they kind of fold, and they do whatever they want to do. And look at how great the lavender looks against it. Like, why lavender? But it was perfect. It was a great idea, plus it gave me a taller element to really create the depth. So collaborating with a fellow artist is a great thing to do. And if you can develop that type of friendship and respect for each other, you can create some amazing art and um, you know, find somebody that thinks the way you do. And, and this is what we're trying to encourage over at the Messy Hand Band of Artists over on Facebook. And we need to be positive and encouraging, but if you ask for advice, we're gonna, we're gonna you know, throw out ideas out there. And don't ever be offended by ideas that are given. Oh, that hurts my feelings. No, 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 no. This is, we're trying to be collaborative. We're trying to support each other. And we're trying to make everybody better artists, including myself. Um, Kat is my touchstone. I mean, I can, I can talk to her about anything and say, okay, what do you think of this? And sometimes her response is not necessarily what I want to hear. But that's okay. That is how we collaborate. And I think you all have the ability to be amazing artists. You just have to push yourself to get there. And, you know, if somebody's just blowing smoke up your butt and telling you how great everything is all the time, you don't get any better. So an opinion won't necessarily be given unless you ask for it, okay? We will give you positive words of encouragement, but if you say, how can I make this better? You will likely get a response from one of the many artists out there at Messy Hands that, that has, uh, sometimes it takes somebody to see something differently. And that's a good thing. Let's have that open conversation. And I want you to come and share your art with me. I want to see what you're making. I don't care who it inspires. And please do not, do not just sit there and copy the things that I'm doing. I want to see you take the idea and make it your own. That makes me happy. Okay, guys, let's get to the project. Enough. Blah, blah, blah. We'll chat soon. Bye. Artists, okay, so I've chosen a nice neutral background that will work for both the sky and the ocean. Here I'm cutting out the basic shapes for the mountains with the grayer toned fabric in the background and the more intense um, purple and black in the foreground. Now I'm laying down my ocean and the reason why I'm doing this particular um, piece of fabric first is because I want to be able to have the mountains kind of work into it. So the fabric, that purple and blue fabric, is really gorgeous. This is the tie-dyed fabric and I end up using it quite a bit in the piece. Um, see how it's doing that natural curling and the tie-dye really does have kind of this wave feeling to it. It was just perfect for this process. So when I saw that curling, it really triggered that I could um, push that curling issue. And if I did that, then it could kind of mimic the waves rolling in. And that's exactly what I started to push. So um, really kind of working on um, making texture. And there, that whiter piece was just to kind of test and see how it was going to fit. There is the gray piece in the back. Um, it does have a little bit of pattern to it, but it's very subtle, um, especially when compared to the purple piece that I've put on top of it. The purple will definitely come forward. All of this is being put down with matte Mod Podge. So here I'm wanting to mimic kind of the turquoise colors and the white colors that are in the ocean. 
and the waves as they're coming in. So I decided to twist the two colors together to see what would happen. And then I kind of untwisted them as I was gluing them down and that really did work out perfectly. I mean, it's, it's a really beautiful effect. Um, and especially since that, um, you know, that, that bluer fabric in there has so many different tones in it. And truly waves are so many different colors. Um, I really do love using that fabric in this application for this. Um, super happy when I figured out how to make it all work together. And I'm actually trying to separate them here a little bit. And by separating them, you know, I, I want to create as much dimension as possible with it. So here I'm trying to um, mimic the waves coming into the shoreline. They are always, you know, kind of that white foamy, um, you know, that water that leads in. And, and that's what the yellow strip was supposed to be. And I think it worked well. Um, so as you can see, I'm putting brighter colors in the front and warmer colors in the front, keeping all the cools in the background and uh, higher contrast in front, uh, darks to lights, a higher contrast. All of these things will really help to create depth within the piece. And that's what we're going for. We are trying to create a landscape. So let's absolutely push the depth content, uh, concept as much as we can. But here I'm futzing because that's what I do. Realize that this is at three times normal speed. So, um, <laughs> It takes me a lot longer than what it looks like. Okay, what's next? Steffi, what are you doing? Oh, I'm getting some white um, fabric. That's what I'm doing. And, you know, this is a white creamy color fabric. It's not a gray. It's, it's more of the cream color. So, again, trying to bring in the thought of those waves crashing into the shore. Just building up colors, building up layers. Pretty cool. Let's see, what do I do next? Oh, quit futzing with it, girl. God darn it. Just, just put it down, move on to the next thing. Okay. So here we're putting in some gray. Now, that is a cooler color. Very low contrast, but still can kind of read almost white-ish but the gray will keep it back behind that yellow which is super important and i just keep kind of putting in these little mm, wave um, thin pieces of white you know kind of showing the white tops of the waves and then and then and then and then i have to turn around and put in the bluer parts of the waves which is what i do next again using that tie-dye fabric um, you know, the variations between the whites and the blues and the intensity of the color really did work for the ocean. And I'm kind of putting it um, under and making it work with that, um, with the grays. It's not helping that Oz is um, working on chewing a big chunk of wood and drinking right now. He's making a ton of noise. Sorry about that, guys. So here I'm just uh, twisting up some more of the blue and gonna make some more waves. I mean, dude, really? Do you gotta do that right now? <laughs> God. Um, you know, make them smaller in the very background. Uh, make them larger as they come forward. Oh, now we're gonna have some dinner. Seriously, I'm trying to record here. Everybody can hear you chomping on your food. Kid. Oh, okay, so here I put on um, a warmer color, a lighter color, creating higher contrast. Um, it's not as yellow as what's in the four waves there, the foreground waves. So it's going to sit in that kind of middle ground area. I also did make some of the beautiful rock shapes that we have here in California along the coastline. You know, I'm sure that's pretty, you know, I know it's like that in Oregon and such where they have those really cool uh, rock peaks sticking out there. Okay, come on. 
Next up. Come on. What are, you, what are you doing next? Okay, futzen, futzen, futzen. Okay, um, so now we're putting some more waves in because they look cool. And the more that I do it, especially from, you know, varying with the very background colors, those darks to the purples to the lights, um, you know, the more that I did this, the better it ended up looking. So, uh, you know, don't expect great art to get done in 30 minutes. Um, you know, this took me... I would guess probably five or six hours to do and um, you know I was super happy with the end piece though so you know we don't have to have always just this you know quick art it, it, it's not as good as you might think it is okay so here's some more waves larger loops you can see how the loops are getting larger all the time as I'm coming forward and look at all that interest and variety back there. Again, the more that I did it, the better it got. And so I just kept doing it until it felt just right. When is the start stop? When is the end? That is only the artist's choice. Um, but again, starting with that dark background and um, then putting in the lightest tones and then bringing in the middle tones really did work. All right, now it's time to trim it all up and see what you got. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, by this time, I'm super excited about the piece. So here, I'm actually bringing in the same yellow that's in the foreground, but I'm using it as sunlight in the middle ground. And the reason why I'm able to do that is that it is a yellow tone. Yes, but it's smaller than those um, wave pieces so scale makes a huge difference but it really did need that bright bit of sunshine to pull your eye into the piece it did it needed it are you going to start chewing on that piece of wood again dog my goodness okay so now we're really pushing to create some some depth and by doing that we're bringing in high contrast up front we're bringing in the brightest colors we're bringing in the lightest colors all of those things will um, really help to create the depth. And, you know, you don't always have to create depth, but when you're doing a landscape, it really does make sense, right? Doesn't that just make sense to try to make it, you know, as cool as you can? This is just fabric, man. And here we are making all this cool stuff from it. I love it. It's awesome. It's super cala, fragilistic, expialidocious. <laughs> I'm trying to fill up all this time and talk to you guys while I'm doing it to explain it to you, but it's hard to keep talking continually for 20 minutes. I don't do it very often. So, um, okay. So here we're bringing in the very brightest yellow. Ooh, look at that. That is the brightest color in that whole piece. And the piece that's right up above it in the wave is probably the highest contrast um, colored piece also. So always, always, always thinking about how to bring your eye, um, uh, you know, through the painting. And now we're going to put in a strip of orange. Oh my God, look at that orange. So <sighs> there's a couple different reasons why I bring in the orange. A, it's the highest contrast against the blue. And it's the brightest, most intense color. And, um, you know, it can really look like the sunlight coming off of the sand. So all of those things were going through my head as I chose that color. Um, and I knew I was also going to build more on top of it and make it work. But even that right there is really elegant. But it needed more. And push and futz and, and uh, you know, get all the pieces where you want them to be. Make sure everything's glued down. Yes, push it down. Put some more glue on there. Do that, do that. Oh, green. Whoa, boy. Here we go. Green and orange and blue. Once again, high contrasting colors working really well together. Now, the, the green and the blue, of course, are not high contrast. But both the green and the blue against the orange and yellow are high contrast. The 
greatest contrast you can have would be the red to the green, which we will do in a little bit. So here is where I was trying to just stick the straight fabric down. And as you can see, it was kind of mushing into the piece. It, it didn't, it wasn't coming above. It wasn't coming on top of, it was just kind of mushing down into those great waves that I had created. And I was starting to get kind of frustrated with it and it wasn't working. And so I started brainstorming. It's like, how can I make this better? Well, I go through and start to add more foreground, of course, higher contrast, um, you know, and really thinking about what to do. And that's when I remembered the conversation that I had with Kat. Ozzy, my God, dog, what are you doing back there? He's, he's, he's playing with a, a chunk of wood. Okay, so there's where I send the picture to Kat and I say, hmm, what about these poppies? And what about that copper foil duct tape technique? And she's like, go for it, man. Check it out. So you can get a smaller roll of the copper foil duct tape. Absolutely. This is the one I prefer. It is uh, two inches wide and it uh, is one of the longest lengths. It's the cheapest way to purchase it uh, per yardage. I, I did all the math. Um, you can get smaller rolls of it to check it out. You don't need to spend that much money. It's really not horribly expensive and you can really make some cool stuff with it. Poppy shapes are super easy, guys. Truly, just uh, the best thing to do would be look up coloring book pages of poppies and it'll give you the basic outline. You know, you've got three petals that are kind of funky going each way. And then for the smaller ones, again, you have kind of that three petal look. They're super easy. It's, there's nothing tough about it, guys. Just practice it and, you know, cut it out of regular paper first. And by the time you get to the sixth, seventh or eighth one, you'll have a really good idea of how to make it work. And at first it just kind of looks like a triangular weird shape, you know, but, um, you know, once you put the center in and you put the stem on and all of those things, it looks really great. Here is the um, lavender bits that I was putting on there. Oh. We'll go for an adventure maybe tomorrow. I shouldn't. I should not go for an adventure tomorrow, but I think it'd be really nice to go for an adventure. Which means I've got to work my behind off. Huh. That's because I've got to get projects done. <laughs> can't eat it. No, you can't eat it. No, it's not for us. It's not for us. So this is where the idea of the road trip came from, was that conversation I was having with Oz. So yeah, Stabilo with fabric makes a big, sloppy, goopy, yucky mess. Oh my gosh, guys. I mean, it picked up the glue underneath and um, obviously, uh, you know... There's just no reason to have big gray smudges all over your piece of art. And, um, you know, the only reason why you're doing that is if you're really trying to hide what's underneath of it, in my opinion. So, you know, that's why we use a fine line with Stabilo. 
And we use it with a paintbrush in order to really control the line. Um, but look at what happened. Yeah, yeah, it was horrible. I was so frustrated with this. So I had to go and spend another 45 minutes redoing the sky. So when I did it, it was um, really disheartening. However, the result with using this tie-dye color that's already reflected in the ocean really did turn out incredibly beautiful. Um, I was cutting around the tie-dye marks and using it as kind of cloud shapes. Um, really did work out perfect. I think all of this fabric is cotton fabric. Um, either a calico or there's something along that line. Just cutting out pieces and parts and gluing them down. Cutting them up and gluing them down. Cutting them up and gluing them down. Cutting them up and gluing them down. So you see that kind of uh, greenish strip down there at the bottom? That was the original fabric. And I intentionally left that like there because, um, you know, when you look at the piece itself, it mimics a mountain range in the background, a very subtle change of um, color, just a touch bit warmer than the sky. So that does pull it forward and it turned out really, really cool. Super happy with how that sky ended up. All right, now to really start building um, with those copper foil pieces. So glad that I um, experimented with the Stabilo before I put on all of these pieces. Otherwise, I would have had a really hard time uh, redoing that sky. These pieces had to be put on last. So I tried to use Mod Podge with it. Mod Podge does not work. Um, it does not stick it down at all. So my Fabri-Tac was almost uh, empty, was super frustrating. Um, so the diamond, mm, diamond glaze glue is what I used. Now this did not dry immediately. It actually took quite a while. So I had a lot of mobility with the flowers and if I knocked them, they kind of all fell off and moved around. It was rather frustrating. So I would completely suggest to use your Fabri-Tac or something along that line that has a little bit more stick. The copper foil wasn't really happy taking the glue. So, you know, it's just a matter of finding what works best for you. And just because it works for me does not mean that it'll work good for you. So, you know, experiment. Try what you have on your desk. See what you can do. All right. So the oranges and the reds are in contrast with the greens and the blues. And um, those little lavender bits really just kind of tied it all together. The taller elements working really hard on creating some variety. Now I'm coming in with a black gel pen. And here in a bit, I'll be coming in with a white gel pen also. Uh, the black and white both are Uniball Signo pens. I believe they're medium point lines. They work really nicely. I'm quite happy with them. And uh, let's see, what do we do next? Next, oh, okay, so here's real time. Do, 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 It's like watching it in slow motion. Um, but no, you've been watching everything at three times speed. Okay, thanks so much for watching, everybody. We're getting towards the end. Uh, we do have a little bit more here left to go. Um, just bringing in the whites. Please, please, please hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. It is super helpful for other artists to find me. Um, thank you so much for being here and watching all the way through. I really do appreciate it. Come join us over at the Messy Hand Band of Artists and... Uh, Share with me what you are working on. If this inspired you to make your own oceanscape, I would love to see it. I really would. So here I'm just going through with a white gel pen, putting in some more detail. I started out slow with this because I didn't want it to be overwhelming, these you know the little detail lines. And then I built up and built up and built up. 
Super happy with how it went. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.